Hi, I'm Professor Steve Gideon, and welcome to tool number eight. Still up at my wife's family cottage in the Muskoka region, just near Perry Sound, and trying to get a little filming in before the uh, boating traffic starts today and the noise and the wind picks up. So hopefully this will work out and the sun will treat us well. So, so far you've clarified your design challenges in the first four series of tools. You've come up with five different design challenges related to your career and your life. We then introduced you in the user centricity principle and in tool number five to the idea of the customer and um, talked about four different customers and talked about a wide variety of tools and techniques and methods and books that you can use as you go through this user centric double diamond exploration of a way to search for and find a solution to your various design challenges. So instead of a single diamond, we talked about a double diamond. That first, you need to understand the problems of the customers before figuring out what the solutions might be. So before you tell someone, hey, hire me because I'm great, you first figure out what their needs and problems are, and then you can craft your pitch and your resume to address what their needs are, what their interests are showed you a variety of tools that arise from the literature on this double diamond here and um, in the last couple of tools I showed you in tool number five the customer persona tool and in tool number 6a I talked about the interviewing tool in particular so with the pilot in the plane principle I'd like to also say that you could be the customer and that in addition to just focusing on the problems and solutions for other people that you could also use the same double diamond to also incorporate yourself. So this gives rise to an integration of these sets of tools that um, the journaling that you've done, the wheel of life that you've done, and some of these other tools that you've used, this is kind of like you trying to discover what your problem is that you might want to solve. And so um, I show here a variety of these tools and how they map onto a single integrated double diamond. So uh, I've added tools number one through four to the first diamond. And in today, in tool number eight, I'm going to give you some divergent tools on the solution side of things. And I'm going to give you some mind mapping, brainstorming, and the odyssey journey techniques around divergent thinking on this solution side. So the first one, to get your creative juices flowing and to get some choices out there and to get some wide-ranging selection of divergent ideas to, to, to choose from is a mind map. And I'm sure you've seen this tool before. This is a good tool to use when you're on your own and you don't have a design team to help out. Here's an example from uh, Learning Fundamentals. Uh, the basic idea is you, you, you put the main thing that you're trying to ideate around in the center and then you have increasingly divergent ideas that branch off of this. And by the time you get from the central idea to three or maybe four levels out from it, you've really started to get your left brain creative juices flowing in a wide variety of divergent ideas and concepts and words and, 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 and tools. Here's another example that I found online from Canny Picks. This is a template you could use for your own um, mind map. Here's an example that I drew from Designing Your Dot Life. This was a specific mind map that someone used trying to ideate around a career in the, he wanted a career of, around being outdoors. And so he didn't know exactly what that meant and what might be some divergent tools around that. But by the time he went through a series of these increasingly divergent uh, branches off of being outdoors. This particular person, you know, came up with things like a tropical beach or exotic locations or pirates and, and things like that. Brainstorming is another set of tools that you can use. You've probably used brainstorming before and um, brainstorming is particularly good when you've got a design team. When you've got a diverse team of people who can help ideate around an idea and you write down post-it notes and you kind of sort of um, play off of each other. One person comes up with an idea and somebody else says, oh, that stimulates an idea that I have as well too. So that's an example of a, of a brainstorming technique you can use with a, a diverse team. Think radical collaboration in principle three. 
Here's another tool I'd like to expose you to. This is similar to word association, but you're using a photograph to help stimulate some of your creative juices. This is a photograph I picked off of uh, Free Pick. This is a, a whale coming out of the water, and this stimulates some ideas. So you look at this and you give yourself 10 minutes to come up with a bunch of words and concepts and ideas that arise out of this. There's three kinds of words or ideas that arise from a photograph like this. The first one would be words like whale or breach or fish or water or ocean or clouds or horizon. These are things contained within the photograph itself, and these are really right brain, pretty logical things that arise from this. The second set of words or ideas kind of logically arise from the photograph. These might be things like freedom, happiness, joy, oceanography, maybe environmentalism. Um, Free Willy, the movie, kind of directly arises out of this photograph here. It's not contained within the photograph, but it's kind of a right brain, sorry, it's kind of a left brain logical inference from the photograph itself. What we're looking for is something more divergent and more creative and something that arises spontaneously out of your right brain thinking, your creative side. So an idea here might be Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley, how does that come out of here? Exactly. Just as the whale kind of rose and crashed, Elvis Presley rose to stardom and then crashed before he kind of killed himself. Um, so you can see the association, but it's not a direct contained within the photograph idea. Similar kind of right brain thinking from here might be things like BP. British Petroleum, or Aliens, or uh, the movie, or Arnold Schwarzenegger, or something like that. There's kind of an inference or a chain of reasoning, but it's kind of like Arnold Schwarzenegger. How does that come out of this? Well, whales look kind of alien. Alien was a movie. Arnold Schwarzenegger played in this movie, as an example. Again, you're not trying to assess whether you like the words that come out of this. You're just trying to stimulate a widely divergent set of of ideas and concepts that you can later draw upon. Okay, so now that you've gotten your creative juices flowing and you've gotten your right brain limbered up and you've got a divergent set of ideas and concepts out there and you've also got a wide variety of divergent post-it notes from some of your previous tools, we're going to talk about the Odyssey journey. I love the Odyssey journey. I got this out of Bill Burnett and uh, David Evans' book, Designing Your Life. Uh, it arises out of the Greek Homeric epic poetry of um, Homer on uh, the Iliad and the Odyssey. So the Iliad was the poem or the story about the Trojan War and Helen of Troy, whose beautiful face launched a thousand ships, and um, the Odyssey, which is the story of Odysseus's journey home from the Trojan Wars. Apparently Odysseus angered one of the gods accidentally, and the gods had it in for him. So they continually blew him and his crew off course and sent him on this odyssey of discovery. And like any hero, he used grit and tenacity and resourcefulness and overcame obstacles. He and his crew battled the cyclops and the harpies and witches and sorcerers and the sirens and overcame obstacles before finally returning home to Greece and his beautiful wife Penelope ten years later. So just like you, you can have a heroic journey. And rather than kind of a boring journey that nobody's interested in, you could have a heroic life. Hopefully you don't have too many obstacles in your life, but hey, if you want grit and tenacity, you got to overcome obstacles to earn your grit and tenacity. So the idea is um, that you want to set a time frame to ideate some divergent journeys of what your life might look like. So, so Bill and Dave suggest a five-year plan in their book, that uh, 10 years is too long, who knows what's going to happen, it's too much of a bizarre fantasy, two years is too short, everyone's kind of sort of knows exactly what you have in store for you in the next year or two, but five years gives you the idea to have some creative serendipity, um, but, but short enough that you could still plan around it. And so you're looking for three different plans, divergent plans. The first one, plan A, is what a great life might look like over the next five years. Um, and it's, this is fairly left brain causal reasoning based on where you currently are, but hopefully incorporate some of your career planning ideas that you've had in the last few weeks of the course. Plan B is an alternative if plan A was absolutely not available. So if you want to become a professor, for example, imagine that suddenly 
universities have all, because of COVID-19, closed down. They're not offering any new slots anymore. The bottom has fallen out of the faculty market. And so you can't be a professor anymore. You got to pick something else. But hopefully something that's wonderful and interesting and unique and, and uh, will result in happiness in your life. Again, you're looking for divergence. So it has to be different than plan A, but hopefully something that would be wonderful for you. Finally, plan C is, or journey C, I should call it, would be um, you've got all the money you would ever need. You've got a rich aunt or uncle, you won the lottery, maybe you had a great investment that panned out. You've got all the money you need, what would you do? What wild and crazy, deep, divergent, exotic things would you do in your life? So then you go through these three different divergent sets of ideas and you say, what great cool things from you get from plan B and C to incorporate into plan A? Can you come up with a new plan that's better than any of these three? Again, you do some divergent thinking and then you do some convergent thinking around what might be some hypotheses that you could test or some goals that you might set. So I'll give you some examples here that I found online. This comes from uh, Bill and Dave's uh, Designing Your Life. Here, plan A for this individual was becoming a corporate lawyer. Go to, go to law school for a couple of years, take the exam, maybe have a short trip to Spain, start to work, get married, buy a place, something like that. This is kind of sort of fulfilling expectations. Um, sounds like a cool idea, but doesn't really love it all that much. Plan B for this individual was, I can't be a lawyer anymore. Maybe I could be a starving artist or an artist of some sort, hopefully successful. Uh, take some painting classes, start exhibiting, start selling some paintings, get married, maybe go to a longer trip to Costa Rica instead of Spain, start teaching painting classes. Really likes this one, as you can see on the, on the rating scale here. Mm, doesn't have tremendous confidence that he wants to do this, uh, but it's got some cool ideas in there. Plan C that kind of ideates around both of these is to become a museum curator in New York City. Instead of going to law school, going to art school or art history school. Gets married maybe a little bit earlier, works in a museum, takes a longer trip to Italy to learn about art, and then goes through and says, well, I really like this. Hmm, you know, is there a way that I can incorporate some of these elements into my plan A? Is there a way that I can maybe take a longer time to go to law school, or maybe while I'm in law school, take some art classes, or maybe I can work on my art while I'm also working on understanding art history and maybe taking a longer time to go to law school. Or maybe instead of going to law school, maybe I could become a paralegal or something like that. So again, the idea is not to judge any of these plans in this phase. You're just doing divergent thinking and then later on you'll test and maybe interview some more people around what might that kind of a life look like in the convergent thinking phase. Here's an example of using freehand um, drawing to do your Odyssey journey. Um, doing drawing helps stimulate your creative juices, so instead of typing everything out, you might want to use drawings instead. Here's another example I found online of somebody who did a couple of different plans you might want to look at for some ideas around how to do this. You can download one of these templates or canvas from the designingyour.life website. Um, and uh, this gives you the five-year plan as well as these dials around, you know, whether you like it, what resources you have to access it, and things like that. So here's a summary again of this kind of step-by-step -step set of tools. But again, you're not fooled into thinking that any step-by-step -step plan will, will work for you. Step-by-step -step methods and approaches are based on um, a planning-based causal reasoning logic. You're trying to use principles and a more serendipitous approach, but you know I have to teach this class in a chronological week-by-week -week basis, and so this is kind of sort of the step-by-step -step sequence that I've laid out here in, in the tools that we've done um, tools one through six already. This is tool number eight, which is a divergent thinking tool. In the next couple weeks, I'm going to be giving you some convergent thinking tools around goal setting and hypothesis testing in tool number nine as well as some self-talk and uh, cognitive behavioral therapy ideas in tool number 10. So don't forget entrepreneurship is like learning how to play the guitar. Get out there and practice. Use the tools. Iterate as you go through things. 
Don't forget to crank it up to 11. Have a wonderful life.